nightfall in the nation's capital as the PLL Championship Series continues. We're at the St. James in Springfield, Virginia. Game two here on day two of this tournament. It's the Boston Cannons and the Utah Archers both looking to get in the win column. Both teams played Wednesday. Boston losing to California. Utah falling to Philadelphia. Earlier today, the Water Dogs of Philadelphia proved to 2-0, knocking off the California Redwoods 20-14. One more day of round robin play tomorrow before the semifinals are set and the seating is set for Sunday. Cannons running out on the field right now. Marcus Holman, attackman of the year in the PLL, nine points. We saw Asher Nolting as the distributor on Wednesday. Yeah, the one two punch really carried over from last year's regular season. Holman, three two pointers. And Nolting with four assists, which was second in the tournament coming into today. That one-two punch, the skill set that they bring, need to see more of them. We'd love to get Nolting, the ball is stick more, kind of dodging and operating. The other guy that I think needs to step up, Drenner, had a solid day. Three points, two goals, one assist. But he's that playmaker, can kind of go right and left. He's got range, more production out of him. Ethan Raw, he had a goal. Two cause turnovers, one of which led right to the breakaway. He was a cause turnover machine last summer. Need to see more of that. And Campbell, he had a strong showing two two-pointers. So Boston was right there against Philadelphia, against the Redwoods. Can they get over the hump tonight with the, against the Archers? That fun fact, Ronan Jacoby's mom was one of the top 10 Irish step dancers in the world. Amazing. Amazing tidbit. Outside of Jacoby, Moore and Williams, solid days, three three points apiece, but need, need to see more production, just in a limited offensive firepower. Those guys need to step up. Algevin's kind of the two-way guy. He had one two-pointer. Nate Solomon, two goals, six touches. I, I think he needs to get the, the rock more often. One was the highlight kind of fake jump shot to score two goals on only six touches. Ultra efficient, get him the ball. Patrick Birkinshaw will start in goal for the Archers, 5 for 13. And then Nick Washuda came in in the second half and really clamped down. Washuda on Wednesday was the only goalie above 50%. Adam Gittleman, the 34-year-old vet, will begin in goal for the Boston Cannons, 31% in game one. Uh, the PLL put their poll out. Cannons, a slight favorite. If you're the Archers, everybody has written you off as the underdog, as the fourth team in all this. I'm surprised that it's this close. I, I want to see the social media accounts of, of Boston and Utah, how many followers each team had to, to contribute to that even balance. Well, Josh Stout wins the ground ball, but turns it right over. So the Archers will go on offense first. It's Reese Eddy, dumps it to Piper Bond. And now Ryan Augevin with his first touch. Matt Moore coming out of the box along with Jacoby. But, but back to that poll and kind of more serious tone. If you're archers, this has got to be a quote-unquote low-scoring affair from a Sixers perspective. Whereas Cannons, they've got the offensive firepower. Right? They lost that one-goal game in the 20s. They want to make this a little bit more of a track meet. So if this game gets up near 20, advantage Cannons. If this stays in the teens, advantage Archers. Matt Moore misfires on the first shot for the Archers, and now the Cannons go to work on offense. Matt Campbell, eight points on Wednesday. Nolting had four assists, and here's Ryan Drenner. And Archers are starting this game in a zone. Big save by Birkinshaw on the hammer from Chris Aslanian. So they're set up in kind of a 2-1-2 two -two zone on basketball. You can see Moore passing somebody off to Eddie here. There's Holman from up top, too high. You force the offense to use more clock. To your point, you can condense the game, keep it low scoring. Hopefully see some more outside shots that Birkinshaw can see a little bit better. And you save your legs. You're playing three games, three round robin games in four days. And then that's a bunch of stuff right against the semis and the finals the next two days. Here comes Ryan Ambler, shoots on the run and pegs the back of the net, one nothing Utah. Game tailor made for this Sixes style, the big sweeping 
from the wings. That lefty, he can get to the middle. Two goals in his first game. The other thing this zone does is it allows you to hide offensive players a little bit more. And Boston still figuring out how to attack this zone. They turn it over. Yeah, that was one of my biggest questions coming in with a year under our belt of the championship series is when will we see zone? Who's going to throw it out there? What will it look like? Here comes Cole Williams. Drew the double. Low to high. There's Nate Solomon. The touch. The score. It's 3 nothing Archers. Matt Cavanaugh accelerates up ahead. Drenner absorbs the body check. Stout from the outside. And he's wide to the right. Yeah, they, they had six two-pointers, so that's a counter if you're going to run zone and get these outside shots. Had a chance there. Jacoby couldn't handle the pass. So the Cannons have the firepower to make you pay. They had six two-pointers in their first game, but they shot just 33% from two-point range. There's Bubba Fairman. Shoots on the run, and he gets it to go. Now, the other thing, Ryan, about playing zone, it forces the offense to have quality shots because a bad shot's a turnover and an easy way to beat the zone, score before it sets up. Yeah, so can you push in transition? I think Bubba Fairman, for example, classic kind of two-way guy, could be pivotal in this game doing just that. Fairman against Matt Moore. Piper Bond tried to score off the bounce and now a transition opportunity. Campbell from the outside. We're tied at three. NBA style pulling up from the three-point range there. In transition. Yeah, that's right. In transition. I don't want the layup. I want the deuce, baby. 102. I guess if you can shoot over 100 miles an hour, why not? Here comes Matt Moore, his is high, and it looked like the goalie Gittleman got a piece, so it will stay with the Archers. Shot clock resets. The traditional backup rules on shots don't apply. It's basically last touch, so the team that touched it last gives up the ball to the other team. Augevin torpedoing toward the crease, and then how about Pattis Lanyon? Tornadoes away from trouble. Roaring down the alley. Nolting the trailer, his shot blocked. And, and that was classic Adam Gittleman. If you go underneath, I'm not sitting back in the cage, in the crease. I'm an extra defender, former high school football player. I'm coming out and I'm laying contact. Uh, Gittleman likes to spring out of the cage. Cole Williams, former Johns Hopkins Blue Jay, crease feed bond. That one hit the pipe and out of bounds to Boston. Again, if it hits the pipe and it goes out of bounds, it was last touched by the shooting team, so Boston ball. Hey, pick him up, pick him up. Yeah. Saw Brody Merrill looking on. He's an assistant for the Cannons. Still looks like he can suit up. Drenner from two, save Birkenshaw. And that's the easiest way to beat this zone. If you're going 2-1-2, two two, just play three around the arc and try to exploit that three-on-two matchup there. Solomon plays catch with Moore. Jacoby from the angle. Would you call that a crease crank? <laughs> it's close. <laughs> Holman thought about it. A couple of former Tar Heels matched up against each other, Holman and Connor Marr. But you can see Holman trying to do what, exactly what you just said, attack the zone before... New 30, Holman from outside, his fourth two-pointer of this championship series. He's dialed in. And Ken Birkenshaw stand on. He's going to see a barrage of. Here's Campbell. Over Villanova Wildcat. Now Nolting 
Left high point is one of the top ten scores in college lacrosse. Drenner scores on the rebound. And credit Nolting with a Kobe assist. Oh, a little press here. Got to get it across midfield before the shot clock hits 10. And Jacoby able to do so. He's got more over to Bond. And good early offense by Utah. Archers right there at 6-5. And one of the things I love about this format is you see some guys in some unfamiliar spaces. Bond went the regular season last year that scoring. He's got a goal in each of the first two games. Nolting against Barr. Gets the pick from Stout. That one hits Pattis landing in the face. That won't be over and back. Cavanaugh shot clock at one. Aslanian whips. We got a quick restart. Here comes Marr. Bond is out there. And now they'll sub off. So and if you're Cavanaugh, you got to get the ball in the corner there. I mean, they are lucky that the archers didn't pick that up and have a clean breakaway. Matt Moore from two, one of the best shot creators in the PLL. His body control, just absorbing contact, rolling off of him, really using the defense's pushes against him. It's his second and two of this champ series. Trenner behind the cage to Holman. Chris S. Lanyon. Trying to shake Reese Eddy, normally a long pole, playing with the short stick. No poles allowed in this format. Skip pass Campbell. Draws the triple over to Drenner. Textbook. And it's 7 all. That's a crease crack. <laughs> Goalies love that, don't they? Uh, that's why most who, of them really play in a half. Who, 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 who was that guy on your team when you played? Uh, Matt Pasque. He loved a good crease crack. See here, you got to understand matchups. You got Jacoby on Nolting. I guess you got Solomon got five on seconds. Five Next. seconds. Drenner turns the corner. Feet in front. Fairman drops it in. And that brings us to the end of a frenetic opening eight minutes. Cannons and archers end to end action. Had some two point shots as well. Three ties. A couple of lead changes. And it's Boston with a one-goal lead. Boston, two early two-pointers. Archers fighting back just like they did two nights ago. that Unleashed is taking them under their wing and giving them an opportunity to show what the PLL men get to do here in this champ series. All right, I got a six-year-old at home who is amped amped to watch Charlotte North go to town tomorrow. Here comes Josh Stout, save by Birkinshaw. Connor Moore, working out of an ambush. Yard sale. And we're going to get a procedure call, playing without a stick. They're stuck together. Man, Kavanaugh, don't put me in a bad position. Don't do that to me again. He can play without a stick at the hole. Go. Yeah, that's what Chris Bates is yelling about. The procedure call, that, the only thing it could have been was playing without a stick, but you can play you can, without yeah, a stick. Yeah, so Maddie came in to clean that up because I was going to say the same thing. You're allowed to. So what's the call? He called a hold. A hold, okay. Now, was it a hold or is he just... Nolting, that's a long one. You said you wanted to see a little more scoring from Asher. I, I want to see him post up. I want to see him distribute, create his own shot. You look back, he only took four shots. Jacoby on the run with the answer. Big day for Division Three. Kevin Rogers game one with the fan club. Ronan Jacoby, who was a stalwart at Wesleyan. Like Nolting on this high wing, he could go underneath. He could sweep over the top. As Lanyon back to Nolting. Face dodge, toe drag, back out to Campbell. Coming down the alley, Birkinshaw the save. Uh, different body makes, 
But, but we should be seeing the same thing from Nolting that we saw from Sowers in the game prior. Touch the ball on every yes, set of possession. Yes. Touch the ball, dodge, create your own shot. They, they have to slide to you. And then feed from there. Moore to Solomon, fakes the BTB, and then the backhanded shot blocked. R retrieves. Shot clock at three, at two, and that one wide by Jacoby. Side feed. Race to the end line. And Holman could not keep it in bounds. Didn't love that possession by the Cannons. Like you've got Kavanaugh and Aslanian. Get into the two minute game. Right? Like you had it set up on that left side. Go hard to the case. Try to get something there. I, I just thought that they wasted too much of the clock before throwing a Nolte here again. Figured out. Williams pretzels around his defender and scores. Substitution here. Here's Stout looking for his first goal of this champ series. Played at Utah for Brian Holman and Marcus Holman and Adam Gittleman. All teammates now except for Brian. He's the coach. That's Chris Eslanyan. Birkinshaw sweeps it aside. Archers have got out of that zone defense, have been more man to man. They've been hunting early offense, too. Matt Moore over to Jacoby. Left hand free. And it shrieks offline. Chris Bates, head coach for Utah. The Archers, PLL champions in 2023. Missing a lot of their stalwarts from that team. Grant Ament was supposed to be a part of this, but an injury forced him out. Nate Solomon, who's guarding... The crease right now is the injury replacement, and that's too easy for Ryan Drenner. That was beautiful executions. A little three-man action there. Nolting and Holman in a little pick slip, and then the third guy, Drenner, just flashes down the crease. Cole Williams is hurt. He's down. Slithered inside between a couple of defenders, hit the pipe, and well, he's down. And he's holding his right knee. We were talking to Paul Rabel between games, and yeah, he reiterated the injury rule in this tournament. If you lose one player, you're down a player. Yeah. Now, if you lose two, you can select one from the player pool. If you're down three, you can select up to two players from the player water, pool. Water, water. And we saw the Redwoods in the last game lose both Apple and Ricky Miazon to injury. They left the game. If they're not able to go tomorrow, the Redwoods would have the option. And now Cole Williams with that right leg bent helped off the field. As he gets to the middle of the field here, Nolting gets him. Tough to see what he, what the tail end of that play as he goes down. You hope it's not something serious. Williams was acquired from Denver in the offseason for Connor D. Simone. And he's a free agent after this champ series. Solomon can't handle the pass. Rakes it back 
and scores in one fell swoop. He's got like four goals on like eight touches total. Even when he drops the ball and picks it up, it's a highlight. Barely misses this connection, kind of stays with it. Quick ground ball, forget about it. Let's fire. Drenner trying to shake Robbins. Campbell, penthouse palm. That's a two. Two two-pointers in their first game. He's already got two. He's picked up on uh, the format. The Novograd, two is worth more than one, Anish. You learned that at Princeton? <laughs> I was giving him, I was giving, you know, Villanova undergrad a little bit of credit. I mean, I'm a comms major, but I, I can, I can figure that one out. Well, it took the NBA like 30 years to figure it out from an analytics standpoint. Good job by the camera crew staying with Marcus Holman there. And Ashraf, human calculator, Ryan Boyle, Dana Boyle down on the sideline. Holman thought about it. Bar stays with him. Good crease feed. And Matt Cavanaugh cans it. Yeah, he got Augevin napping off ball. Little ball watching. Beautiful backdoor cut there by Cavanaugh. Ambler eyes, Pat S. Lanyon. Ambler shoots on the run, and he stings the corner. He's got a little more juice this game. That first goal of the game was a two-pointer. I didn't catch it in real time that it was a two. It was kind of on the run on a big sweep. But he's playing with more life tonight. You know what I think it is, RB? He's got a new tooth. Yeah, okay. He played all <laughs> summer with a missing tooth. And he got a new tooth fitted for the Champ Series. Well, there you go. I think it's good luck. I'm just saying. Wait till you find out, Ryan, what the going rate for the tooth fairy is these days. <laughs> Inflation hits hard. <laughs> One forty to go, first half. Timeout, Utah, 13-11. Free and it whistles wide. 3.5 seconds. Gittleman sends a mangonel downfield. It's caught by Kavanaugh and he scores to beat the buzzer. Adam Gittleman, two assists in the final moments of that first half with an absolute BB to Matt Kavanaugh. That was a dime. I mean, the, the previous one to Holman, okay, good outlet. This Full length, three quarters of the field on the money. A little bit. Both teams changing goalies in the second half. Colin Kirst in for the Cannons. Nick Washuda, who played real well on Wednesday, in there for the Archers. This is a critical stretch for Archers here. You know, they, they can't let this six-goal lead balloon, right? You think from a football game, that kind of middle four, right, where you can get the ball, the last possession, and the next ball after halftime. That, that's what I kind of see for the Cannons here. They went on that run to finish the half. If they can make the next run, you can pretty much put Archers away. Stout, who's a big body behind the cage, now up top. Nolting. Dodging Eddie, and it's off the stick of Stout. Well, Stout's a guy who is playing for a PLL future here. Yeah, there's a few guys that are in kind of that tryout mode, if you will. I, I think the poster boy for that, you look at Caraway last year, had a standout championship series for Atlas. Waterdogs pick him up, he had a great regular season. Cursed denies Jacoby. Stout on the cannons.
an update here on Cole Williams in just a moment. Dana, what have you heard? for the rest of the game, lower body injury. He's not even on the sidelines right now, so still being evaluated back in the locker room. All right, he was favoring his knee when he came off the field. Right, he's another guy. Free agent after this championship series, acquired in a trade with the Outlaws. Jack. Yeah, Solomon one. hounded by Rawl, who leapfrogs over him. And that's a turnover. Yeah, well, yeah. Utah, Ryan, you know, when we've seen them successful offensively, it's been early offense, it's been transition. You get them into a settled set, that, that, that's not how they're built to score in this setting. Yeah, they just don't seemingly have that one guy like Asher Nolting, Michael Sowers from the Water Dogs, the previous game, where it's like, hey, go generate us a shot. You, you can't give the ball to one guy and pretty much know, oof, he can bring it, huh? He is not shy. That, that they don't have that one guy that you know and trust that you can give him the ball and that you're going to get a quality look whether he gets it or he finds a teammate. And that would have been Grant Amex. Yeah. And he's hurt. Yeah. He was scheduled to be a part of this championship series. Nate Solomon, who's got the ball now, who played at Syracuse, was Amex's injury replacement. Andler strong to the cage. Kirst made the save. Didn't see where it ended up. And now Drenner the other way. And if you don't have that one guy, that, that was my point about the assists. If you don't have that one guy, then you need to have the ball zipping from side to side. Picks on ball, picks off ball. Nolting feeding Holman. And going the other way. I thought he forced that a little bit. He had Kavanaugh on the opposite side. He could have just swung that, and Kavanaugh would have had a clean step down. It's an area where Nolting really improved in year two of the PLL. Doubled his assists, cut his turnovers in half. Moore looking for Bond, his communication. And he's the guy that you think can generate a shot, but he, he's just not the feeder, right, as some of the other number ones on teams. That's a save by Washuda. It will stay with the cannons. Last touch by Washuda. Fairman from behind. Now Nolting. Drenner working on Eddie. Splits the double. Another save by Washuda. It will stay with Boston. And a fresh 30. Multiple opportunities within the same possession. This is so hard to defend. Here comes Campbell, right hand free, turned away again. And this possession extends for Boston. New 30, nobody has scored in this third quarter. And you're gonna get a fresh body on the substitution with Holman. Let's see if Holman will cook from up top. He's got Bond. Campbell gets a step on Eddie and Campbell with the goal to make it's it 18 just, It's just too long to defend. It's just too long. I mean, four shots within the same possession. It was really only a matter of time. Solomon gets past Drenner, fake, and a score. So back to your point about kind of tryouts, right? Solomon's kind of in that boat. Jacoby is certainly in that boat. And it's not just for the team that they're playing on, right? All eyes of the PLL are on this performance. Solomon, who had two goals on Wednesday, has three tonight. Jacoby was the leading point getter on Wednesday night. Nolting met by Bond. Inside feed, Holman turns, fires off the pipe. Bar vacuums. Great close out there by Piper Bond defensively on Nolting. Here comes Jacoby. Saw the double. Ambler fakes the pass. Ambler over to Bond. Good look. And it'll go.
go the other way. That's, uh, again, and that's part of roster construction, right? Piper Bond, two-way midi. He's not your typical offensive threat. And that's where Ambler, I think, has got to be a little bit more selfish there. Your hands free, you're in range, your sticks to the inside. Don't want more of that. Just fire. Holtzing wanted Aslanian, Pat Aslanian. Was right, watch your keys. Drenner goal line extended. Inside to Knowlton, great position, and that did trickle past the goal line. And Asher Knowlton with a tally, it's 19 to 12. Too easy. There's a really nice feed, a little touch on it, given the tight space, allowing Knowlton to track that. Moore slithers inside, gets mauled, and Curse digs it out. Same deal as before. You had Reese Eddy down there. If that's a Solomon, maybe he's able to pick that tough pass up off the ground and still get a shot on net and bury it. Chris Aslanian from two. Or shoot him. Like a cat out of the cage. And now this could be a live ball turnover. Kavanaugh, Wolfhound off the ground. Suctions. He'll streak to the cage. Kavanaugh missed the cage. Everything but the goal. A Kavanaugh riding. What's new? But, but credit was Shooter. I mean, you, you look at this. He's only given up two goals, two points in this quarter. The Cannons had 17 at half. Ambler thought about the two. Whirls inside. Jacoby. Met by Stout. Knocked loose. D defensively, the archers have done what they needed to do. They just can't generate enough on the other end. And, and you got to wonder if maybe from a sub pattern perspective, you're, you want to get some more offensive guys out there because they're just a little hamstrung just from a personnel perspective. Nolting. To Drenner. Shot fake. That one hits the crossbar. And it's not a goal. Washuda's there. Nick Washuda, a lefty, former All American goalie at Vermont, originally from Minnesota. He's got five saves in the quarter. Here comes Moore. Face dodge and a score. But a good close out there by Campbell just to get more at least off the two-point arc. So if he is going to score, it's only a one. Dana, I see Patrick Birkinshaw on the sideline studying an iPad. What's he looking at? It's interesting. Every backup goalie who's not in the game has a different strategy. For Birkinshaw, he's looking at angles for Rashuda, And if he wants to see them when he comes off, whether it's a timeout or a in between quarters, he'll show him the different angles. But he's also there for Bates' second set of eyes in case there needs to be a challenge flag thrown. It's interesting. Each goalie has a little bit of a different strategy. More as time expires. And the Cannons take their six-goal halftime lead all the way into the fourth quarter. 19 to 13, your score at the end of three. Eight minutes to go in regulation. Both teams hunting that first win of this championship series, Boston and Utah. To it. You're like, what's this place all about? I'm like, I, I couldn't really put it into words. But it's like, just imagine any sport. It, it's, it's, it's there. You walk out of this arena, you run into a hockey rink, a basketball court. Asher Nolte puts it home. Got swimming pools. Incredible workout facility. 20 to 13 cannons on top of Ishraf, Ryan Boyle, Dana Boyle. Thanks for spending part of your Friday with us. Nate Solomon on the rebound. This guy's got the aim of all. Oh, he does a score. Oh, he does a score. Four goals, six shots. Nate's been quiet today, huh? 
I feel like he just hasn't been that involved. You look down, he's only got 12 touches. Meanwhile, we're shooting now six of nine. He was above 50% yesterday. Uh, you're the Archers. I think we've made it pretty clear. In terms of talent and roster construction, they're behind the eight ball, but Washoot is a guy who could be a game changer. Odd man rush here. Campbell around Solomon. Bang! And despite that goal, like... That's not on the goal. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like, he's been a difference maker. Right? They were different when he was in that first game. That really fueled their comeback and being able to keep that one tight to the water dogs. Only gave up two goals in the third quarter. You, you gotta wonder what the archers will look like if he played the full slate. If you're Chris Bates, you gotta think real hard, at least on Sunday in the semis, playing with shoot of both halves. Uh, absolutely. I don't think it, he'll do it tomorrow. I think he'll stick with the split halves unless he feels like they just need a little juice as they seemingly go into their zone here, which they do. Down by seven, making Boston work. Five to shoot. Chris Aslanian. Matt Cavanaugh back to Aslanian, and that skips wide. But they're just a different team with him out there. And if they have him for a full game, and maybe change their subs patterns a little bit and can make it somewhat of a defensive struggle. Jacoby down the alley, Juan and Robbins. Holman plays it to himself and now to his goalie, Kirst. 13 turnovers for Utah. And it was just a really heady defensive play by Holman, recognizing he was covering Robbins, so he's a little bit quicker to double team there. Renner uh, on Jacoby looking for Holman and last touch Utah. I think the last number I saw was 11 when you went to 30. Yeah, we, we're not about. Looks like they want to get the shot 13. clock time 13. correct. It says nine. Four Good. seconds, 13 on the shot clock. Can I point out that Maddie said he saw 11? It was really 13. It's close, split the difference. <laughs> Marcus Holman splits it past goalie with shooter. Maddie just always thinks he's right, so I just I have to point out the one time he's wrong. Largest lead of the game, Solomon. That's off to the side. Curse the outlet up ahead to roll. The Rutgers connection. These Cannons goalies. Four assists. Moore looking for the answer. Curse snags it out of the air. He's got Holman deep if you can see him. Holman wants it. Yeah. He didn't see him. No, if he hit him quickly, they had a 2 on 1. Holman and Bubba Fairman. Now watch out for Campbell. Campbell hunting a two. And on target. Quickly the other way. Moore wants a two. All right. Back and forth we go. And Washuda gets in the assist act. This is the beauty of being a goalie. You get scored on. You got to forget about it. Make the next play. We got a challenge flag down. Holman puts it into the back of the net. The goal counts. The way the challenges work, coaches are limited to challenging basically whether it is a goal or not a yeah, goal. Yeah, but you, you don't have to challenge it too. You get yeah. one per half. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah, you're fine. If okay. successful, you retain the challenge. We don't have a timeout though. Yeah, yeah. Not a timeout, play. Not a timeout, play. And you have to have a timeout to challenge. the challenge whether that was a two or not that's white on white it's not challengeable normally that happens at the end of each quarter in the fourth quarter a two-point shot 
you stop play and you challenge. And Connor Marr, I think it's going to stand as a two. Yes. So it is a two-point shot. Quick review. Official review, not a challenge. Ambler skipped to Moore. That's another two. Kirst sends it back. That was a great save by Kirst. That's going to go back to the Archers. Last touch by the Cannons. Yeah, technically, that was off Kirst on the save. It rolled all the way back. There's Moore. Left-handed two-point shot. Blocked. Holman. Quickly ahead to Drenner. Slams on the brakes. Now you mentioned earlier for the Archers to have a chance. They had to keep this game in the teens. 26 seems too big a mountain. <laughs> they might not be able to hold the cannons under 30. Aslanian behind the back. This was a 10-10 game at one point. Cannons plus 10 since. 16 to 6 run. Like, can you call it a run? Like, it's like half the game. <laughs> 16 to 7. Jacoby, bounce shot. 26 17 overall. You know what I mean? No, it's like, yeah. it's like. This whole game is a run. <laughs> Triple espresso, energy drink lacrosse with a splash of R.J. Kaminsky. Get the meaty! Meaty, meaty! There's Kavanaugh, the southpaw. And in the crease was Stout. Cole Williams has his right knee taped up, and he is standing on crutches. They put up 26 today. Ambler whiffs. And I will say this, 43 total goals so far. There was a vested interest from the fans in this building as we have a flag of getting the goal total to 50. If you get to 50. Nine, where'd he hit him? 20% off at the store. Oh. There's going to be a run on merch. <laughs> Fouls on cannons number nine. One minute, high cross check. There might be a vested interest in the goal total from other parties as yeah, well for other reasons. Say, I thought you were going somewhere else. Good job understanding the rules there by Pat Aslanian. Stick breaks, you stay on the field and you play without a stick. He actually had a trail check with his arm there. Ogden for two. Ricochets off the pipe. Comes back to Washuda. It's 50 yards, goal to goal. Ogden to Ambler. On the wing, Kirst takes away the angle from Jacoby. Super disciplined play by Kirst, just hugging that near pipe. Moore can't handle the pass. Fairman off the ground. Turbo's ahead. And the Cannons will likely just kill some clock. Fairman can run all day. Algevin, he looks like he's coming up a little camping with a limp there. He's had a tough day. Scoreless, three shots. Matt Campbell, nine points today. Three two-point goals. At eight points on Wednesday. And coming off a season where he was an all-star as a PLL rookie. The, the heat he brings, I mean, it just looks like if he can get his feet set and put it on cage, it's going in. Scored 150 plus goals in his Villanova career. Ambler draws the double. Here comes Moore, feeding inside, and Solomon dunks it home. Quick outlet to Drenner, and he'll slow it up. About a 10 second differential between game clock and shot clock. Cannons on the way to the first win of this championship series. Smart, just smart, Mike. Water Dogs beat the Redwoods earlier today. Nolting with seven. With 
five. Kavanaugh got greedy. We shoot us there for the save. I, I confirmed with Nolting before the game. He prefers Jokic, by the way. Bond puts it in. He likes Jokic over Magic. He's from Denver. Come on. Defending champs and all. Buzzer sounds. <laughs> we get one more for bookkeeping. 26-19, Boston over Utah. Tolman, first win in the PLL Champ Series, and you put up 26. What do you attribute that to? Yeah, teamwork, guys being selfless, and, you know, really it's them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have some good players, and, and I think in this thing you can share the rock and score, and, um, but that's always been our mentality as Cannons is making sure everybody gets involved. So I credit those guys. I'm going to give you some credit, too, as their coach. But Matt Campbell, nine points. We know he's not shy to finding the back of the net in his Villanova days, but what does he bring to this Cannons team? Oh, my gosh. I mean, so much. He's a, you know, he's, he was our first pick last year, and, and, and he's a guy that I think is going to uh, typify what, what our organization wants to look like. He's a wonderful kid. I mean, you can't get a better human being. Soft-spoken, but he, but, he, but he produces, right? So, you know walk soft, carry a big stick type of thing, and he's just a great, great young man. He's fun to watch. We'll see you tomorrow, Coach. Okay. Congratulations. Thanks, Thank you. Boston takes this one into the night. We'll talk to you tomorrow.